Hey everybody, Chad with Patriot Astro, and we're back here again today to continue with the Imaging PC video series. In the first video, I explained the components typically found in common mini PC models, as well as what you should be looking for when selecting your own mini PC for astrophotography. We also discussed improving system performance by adding an NVMe SSD, but we'll get back to that in a minute. We'll eventually get to the final video in this series that'll cover the end-to-end -end configuration of this PC using my own process. Windows settings, drivers and software installs, hardware connectivity in NINA and SharpCap, as well as basic NINA and PHD2 profile setups. Before we can do any of that, we need to ensure Windows is installed so that we get the best possible performance. Stick around and I'll help you through it. The purpose of this video today is to show you how to get your own Windows system drive onto a newly installed NVMe SSD. Hopefully some of you are considering an internal NVMe SSD for your own Quieter 2, Quieter 3, B-Link, or similar mini PC after seeing the last video on system performance. If you missed that discussion about performance improvements, you might want to go back and watch that video first. If you don't plan on adding one of these drives to your system, or if you already have one but want to use it purely for data storage, you can continue watching to learn a bit more about the how and why of this process so I can try to convince you otherwise, or you can jump over to the final video in this series once it's available. Once there, you'll be able to get your own PC ready for first light. On the Melee Quieter 2 and Quieter 3 computers, and this will be the same for your B-Link or other mini PC as well, the Windows system drive is on the slower onboard EMMC drive. Ideally, after adding an NVMe drive, you'd prefer that the Windows system drive be installed on the new faster drive. That way, your operating system and all applications can load faster too. All right, so there's likely two groups of you out there. Group one, you already have a mini PC and you're using it today with all of your applications and devices already configured and you just added an NVMe drive to it. Or group two, you just got a new mini PC and an NVMe drive and haven't used it yet. And I guess technically there's a third group as well and you're like group one, but you don't care about what's already installed and wanna treat this like a brand new machine where you can freshly install everything. As we all know, after a while, Windows could benefit from a clean installation. Any of you in this third group, just consider yourself part of group two. So group one first, and here's the potentially bad news for that group. The software I used is Aomi Backupper, and it'll cost you about $50 US or maybe a little less. There are some other options out there that may have trial versions such as Macrium Reflect, so feel free to look around. Since those of you in Group 1 already have apps, settings, and user accounts in place, this software will let you clone everything over to the new drive without any data loss. The alternative $0 options here are to either leave your system drive on the EMMC and just use the new NVMe for data only, or to become part of Group 2 and reinstall and reconfigure everything with the rest of us. If you want to proceed with moving your already in use system to the NVMe SSD, let me quickly show you what that looks like using Aomi Backupper. You'll need to use the professional version of this software as the free version only supports cloning drives from MBR to MBR and does not work with any GPT based drives. Here are some screenshots from the Aomi blog. I'll link that blog entry in the description as well so you can use that as reference. It's a very straightforward process. Boot your computer, purchase, download, and install the backup or professional software. Launch the application and click Clone System Drive. Select the destination partition as the new NVMe drive. Be sure to check SSD alignment. Make full use of disk space is likely already checked since the NVMe is probably bigger than your onboard EMMC drive. Click Start. After it's done, reboot and press F7 at boot up to get into the BIOS. Change the boot order to the new drive. Make sure the NVMe is the C drive after rebooting. Try another reboot or two to make sure the boot order is maintained and the NVMe is still the system drive. Once you're happy with the outcome, you can use Windows Disk Management to format the old EMMC drive since it's no longer needed. All right, group one, you're done and can move on to the next video when it's published. But if you think you might benefit from a complete reinstall of the operating system and just wanna see what that takes, keep watching. Group two, here we go. The first thing you're gonna need is a USB thumb drive. It only needs to be about 16 gig, so just use something you have laying around. You'll be able to reuse this later. It's only temporarily needed during the installation process. 
Melee does have a web page that'll help you through the installation, but I'll do that here as well. There's also a web page devoted to the downloads of both Windows 10 Professional and Windows 11 Professional images that come pre-bundled with all the necessary drivers for the Melee hardware mini PCs. Let's go ahead and get that download started by going to this URL, and in my case, I'm gonna download Windows 11 Pro. Click on the link, and then right-click here and select Download. Now let's open the Disk Management tool by searching for disk and selecting the option to create and format hard disk partitions. In Disk Management, scroll down until you see your thumb drive. If it's not inserted into the USB port yet, do that now. Make sure this is your thumb drive. Do not wipe out the wrong drive. That's a great way to ruin your day. Right-click the drive and select New Simple Volume. You may have to delete any pre-existing volume first if it has already been formatted and was in use. All we want to do here is format this as an NTFS file system. You can create a volume label if you want. I like to name it something like Win11. Depending on your current operating system configuration, this will automatically open once the format completes. If not, go ahead and open it up and make sure it shows as a blank thumb drive. Once the Windows 11 zip file finishes downloading, open it up until you see this set of files. Copy all these files and folders and move them to your new thumb drive. It may take a little while since some of the files are pretty big and most old 16 gig thumb drives can be painfully slow. For the record, I'm speeding up everything in this video that's time consuming so I don't waste your time here today. After the transfer is complete, on the thumb drive, go into the scripts folder. Open up the StartNet configuration settings file in something like TextEdit or Notepad++. Look for the target disk option and change it from EMMC to SSD. This will ensure that the installation process will use our NVMe drive as the destination. Save the file after you make the change. If you're using Windows 10 instead of Windows 11, it's a similar process that's documented on Melee's website. It is a different file name, but there's an edit you need to make. Okay, close the thumb drive file manager window and eject the drive. You can now insert the thumb drive into your Quieter 2 or Quieter 3 system. You'll also want to attach a keyboard and mouse, which can either be USB devices or a wireless USB keyboard and mouse, which is what I prefer. You'll need an HDMI screen connected as well. Once everything's connected, power it on, and as soon as it starts booting, continue to press F7 on the keyboard until you break into the boot cycle. Locate your thumb drive from the boot device list, select it, and press Enter. If you don't see your device here, it may not be a supported thumb drive. You may have to try another one. The Melee Windows scripted installer will now boot off the thumb drive, and installation will begin. It starts by creating the partitions and then moving over the necessary Windows files and then finally installing drivers. The drivers are critical because they are required for this PC to work correctly. This part here is absolutely sped up in this video. It will take a little while. Pay attention as this part of your own install ends though because it will automatically reboot and you're gonna need to break into the boot process again by pressing F7. This time though, we wanna select Enter Setup and then press Enter. Once in the BIOS configuration, go over to the boot menu and change boot option one to be the new Windows boot manager installed on the new NVMe drive. You should be able to differentiate between the EMMC drive and the identifier related to your particular NVMe SSD brand. Here I'm selecting a two terabyte crucial SSD that I installed. Just like the previous videos, I'll go ahead and copy the links of what I'm using over into the video description as well. Once I've completed selecting the correct drive, Press F4 and I can save and exit the BIOS configuration. Make sure you select yes to save the changes. This time we can let it boot without interruption. If the changes took effect, it should boot to our newly installed NVMe drive. And here we go. We're in the Windows setup routine. Go through the basic options and create a user account. After you've gone through some basic Q&A for Windows, it'll display the Windows 11 desktop. Search for disk and then select Manage Disks and Volumes. Drive C should be your new large NVMe drive, and your old EMMC drive should be the smaller one that is still currently available to Windows. Once everything's verified, go ahead and connect to your wireless or Ethernet network and we can start moving forward. Just like I mentioned to Group 1 earlier, we can wait through a couple reboots, but eventually you can delete all of the data on your old drive as it will not be needed anymore. All right, 
Hopefully you feel like you can go ahead and get your system drive over to the new NVMe SSD, either through cloning or reinstallation. Once you've gotten through this process, you can move on to the third and final video in this series where I'll help you get all of your Astro gear connected and working. If you're watching this video on the day it's released, it'll probably be a couple more days until I get that one done, but know it's coming very, very soon. I've already got most of it recorded. It's just a matter of completing the editing process, which can be pretty time consuming. If you have any questions about the process or the components I used, check the video description first, but then feel free to ask any questions in the comments of this video, reach out via email, Instagram, or Discord. If you have any suggestions for additional videos, let me know what you're looking for. I've got a lot of things in the works. I just need some clear skies to complete it. Speaking of that, have a great day, and here's wishing you your own clear skies.